Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining this live stream. We're discussing uh, Amazon Q. Uh, quick first few rounds of introduction. I'm Chris Chapman. I'm the cloud practice lead here at PM Square. I've been with the company for uh, eight, going on nine years. Um, done a lot of different roles here and currently leading the, the cloud team and helping clients migrate from on-premise uh, on-premises to uh, different uh, options in the cloud. And today we're joined with Rupak, who's one of our solution architects. Rupak, want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely, Chris. Thank you, and good morning, uh, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rupak Gautam. I am a solution architect here at PM Square. I've been with the company for precisely 13 months now. I focused uh, predominantly on data engineering and uh, BI practices. Great. Rupak, I know you're in Denver. Is things you get your sweatshirt on? Is things uh, cool off there? I know they have here in the Chicago area. It, it, yeah, I mean the weather here is so unpredictable. It was <laughs> it was good yesterday, and then it's going to be better today. But I feel a little chilly this morning. So same. I had to force the kids to wear coats. They they didn't like that for the first time <laughs> for the year, but they'll get used to it. All right. Well, let's jump into it. So Amazon Q. Uh, I know last year at reInvent, it's a big unveil um, of uh, the way Q is going to be changing over the upcoming year. We're really seeing that come uh, into focus uh, most recently with the different offerings. And so what we want to do is take the time to explore that, to see where Q has been, uh, where it is now, and how different you know, how organizations can, can leverage that. Because there's a, little, a few different flavors of it and different ways to tailor it. So, Rupak, I'll... I'll Turn over to you. Why don't, why don't we jump in and uh, go over some of the, the preamble and then we can jump into some of the demonstrations. Yeah, absolutely, Chris. So basically, uh, if you can see my screen here, uh, basically what we're going to talk about today is uh, talk about the history of Q and then we'll talk about what are its key points, uh, basically features, and then we'll jump into a few demos in different domains with BI. Um, from a developer perspective and from a RAG model, which I'm going to uh, explain how QuickSight Q, uh, Q for Business has been implementing and helping business get uh, more uh, precise answer and be more productive. Productive. So let's dive uh, right in with uh, what is the history of Amazon Q. Uh, so Q is a generative AI powered assistant uh, launched by Amazon Web Services in late 2023. Which is basically what it is, Chris. Is it's it's designed to assist in finding information, solving problems, and completing tasks. Right. So in late 2003, it was designed for uh, businesses, which is like uh, it helps with tasks like having a conversation, uh, solving problems, and generating content, like um, and taking actions by using companies' data, code, or or uh, system. Right. So it's why why and this queue. And why it is doing this is basically it's it's speed it's speeding up in decision making uh, and boost creativity at work. Basically, that is the concept behind uh, leveraging Q or, or designing Q. Um, from from PM Square perspective, I can say how Q we are utilizing Q is our data engineers they are using Q for AWS Glue, which is basically a, a ETL service which helps them um, simplify the creation of data ingestion or data ingestion pipelines with minimal coding, right? Um, which offers guidelines through uh, life cycles and also Q acts as a subject matter expert. So basically it's, it, it, re it reduces the reliance, reliance on, on a manual task. Um, from a solution architect perspective, it provides a, a better architecture pattern, um, also documentations and uh, um, also best practices. Uh, so I can always have a second opinion if I'm designing some architecture, I can always fall back to Q and, and get us a second opinion. So overall, I've seen here at PM Square uh, how Q has boost, significantly boost our productivity and also effectiveness uh, for data engineers and solution architect. Um, so with the history of that, I, I would also want to touch base some of the key points that we have identified here. Well, and uh, when we get on this, so uh, one of the questions I had, it, and I'm sure people out there for uh, people who've been around the idea of this ecosystem for a while, probably most familiar with Q in context of QuickSight. Correct. So 
um, is that is that where we're so you mentioned a, a few different purposes here, but is that so is this key was broken out of, of the bounds of QuickSight? It's yes. no longer just within the walls of, of BI? Yes, it has. Absolutely. That's a, that's a get, great question, uh, Chris. It has. So earlier and in the earlier days, uh, I think when for the beta version, uh, early 2021, it was most focused towards the BI, the generative BI side, where it was most focused where you can use Q only for creating uh, uh, visualization charts based on your data, right? But now Q has expanded its boundaries with uh, leveraging uh, Q QuickSight developers, uh, Q for uh, I mean Q for developers, which is basically assisting your developers with uh, debugging code and also helping them in in writing uh, codes efficiently and and most towards uh, making it more effective and efficient on the software development process. That is one uh, aspect. From the other aspect, we have heard about RAG model all the time. So they have also launched QuickSight Q for, I mean, Q for Business, which is basically you can talk to, you can look into your large um, document base or a knowledge base where whether it is stored in your object storage or whether it is stored in your uh, CRMs and basically talk to your, um, get answers or talk to your large documentation or PDF files or, or data. Uh, using natural language and, and get answers in a matter of seconds. Okay, it, but it's still in. It's still in, still also in QuickSight. No, that this is left there. No, no, but it's still in QuickSight. So okay. Q is now the big umbrella, right? For right. Amazon's right. assistant, they've broken out though into specializations. So we still have BI within QuickSight. Yes. Then the general purpose, uh, it's the the document retrieval, general Q and A, kind of like a chat GPT, but you're not going out to the public and then um and then for developers you're know, comparable to to like GitHub copilot right absolutely okay um i'll continue with some of the features so that we can jump into the the demo side mm -hmm. so uh the purpose here basically is is it's a, a business focused ai tool for answering questions completing tasks and retrieving information Right. So the main goal is to what what is the purpose here is to make your work day easier by handling small and repetitive tasks like answering questions, uh, finding information quickly. Um, having said that, why it is done is so that you can focus more important, focus on important needs and tasks that human thinking and creative where the cre human thinking and creativity is more needed. So that's basically the purpose. Uh, the features again is answering questions, summarizing documents, helping, as I mentioned earlier, um, helping in software development. Um, so it, it quickly provides answer using company database, like I mentioned earlier, right? So you can, from the front end or from your or from your chat model, you can basically ask questions to your knowledge base, and then you you get answers pretty quick. Uh, security, I know it has been a big concern always uh, with the AI being implemented. So uh, with QuickSight Q, it, it's, um, I mean, with Q, it's basically, uh, it emphasizes on built-in security features to protect your sensitive data. So there are features like uh, privacy protection, where the, uh, the data is kept sick, uh, safe and secret. It has a control access, meaning that uh, only the right people can see the right information. And also it has a track uses, meaning uh, you can keep records of who uses what and how for safety concerns. Oh, that's great. So that, that all comes out of the box. It's not, I mean, there's some configuration, but you don't have to, to reinvent the wheel here. These are all the features that come right then. And, and are these integrating, especially like some of the, the, the detective and auditing, or are those integrated with, is that CloudWatch that it integrates with? Right. Correct. Okay. It does. Um, the key points, I know I've already touched, uh, touched base on the key, key points, but here at PM Square, what, and I know there are so many key areas that we can tap in with Q, but with, with uh, so far what we have understand what we have utilized in the, or, or identified the key areas with uh, PM Square here at PM Square is about uh, the information access, business intelligence, like you talked about earlier, Chris, QuickSight Q, and the software development process with uh, with uh, developer for Q for developers and information action with uh, access with uh, Q for business, right? So those are the three uh, areas that we have identified most, but there are other also that Q, can, Q will definitely uh, tap in, in in coming future. But uh, 
I, I can go a little bit more in details about uh, what do you mean by information access, uh, what is the software development process and uh, and the business intelligence, right? Uh, from the from the information access, think about this. You have a large document that you are storing somewhere in the knowledge base. It can be your object storage. It can be your CRM. It can be your databases, right? Objective databases. So what is what Q does is it index companies' documents and in, uh, into a database and allowing you to quickly find information uh, using keywords, searches, or natural language queries. Right, so that is from the informational access. That's how easy it is. And once we go into the demo, I can, I can show you more. But once we go into the demo, that's uh, I can show you how e easier it is to access information if you have a right access, um, and you are allowed to look into the information in those information. Uh, from a software perspective, it offers real-time code suggestions, auto completion of code and also help you with uh, finding potential box, uh, bugs and optimization, code optimization. So that means that you can save an ample amount of time in terms of uh, debugging your code and uh, expedite the software development process. From business intelligence, like you mentioned, QuickSight Q, which is a generative BI, Amazon's generative BI capabilities, it allows a user to create a dashboard, run complex queries, and generate visual reports. So those are the key areas. Uh, for the information access, I, what what kind of do you need to do anything with the information or with the data that's coming in? I mean, if you're looking at SharePoint, do you need to clean it a certain way, structure it a certain way, do anything, or do you no, just I'm, just you can just po just uh, point at it and you're good to go? Yes, you're good to go. Love so you can, you can have uh, on structured data right there. You can have uh, a PDF. You can have uh, CSV or flat files, or you can have you can store a data also in a vector database, but from the you know, CRM perspective, yes, unstructured data, you just point it to the SharePoint URL and then do the configurations that is needed on the uh, queue for business side. And then yes, from the, the front end, you can just, uh, or you can, I mean, from the front end, when I say front end, you can actually use the web URL that uh, queue for business offers, or you can integrate with various apps like Slack or Slacks or Teams, right? So. Uh, you can you can also leverage Q from there as well. Okay, great. So having said that, what I want to do next is talk about uh, the demo here, and I'll have to share my other screen as well. And bear with me a little bit. So before I talk about uh, before I do the uh, demo of what is uh, uh, demo of it. Uh, we I, I want to talk a little bit about how it works and then how uh, what is what is QuickSight. Right? Uh, so QuickSight Q is a natural language query services integrated with Amazon Q QuickSight. Uh, Amazon powerful. Uh, so Amazon QuickSight is a powerful uh, business intelligence tool, and it with the help of QuickSight Q, it generates visuals insights like graphs and chart based on your natural language question. Uh, this is the high level, but you have to understand what, what are the components that goes behind generating all these visuals, right? So the component of QuickSight Q is its natural language processing engine, meaning uh, this is the core component that interprets your user questions when you ask questions about creating a visuals, then it interprets the user questions that is posed in everyday language. and uh, interpret especially with business intelligence queries. Another component is its auto-generated visualization, meaning it can automatically create appropriate charts, graphs based on your query and your data. And also it creates interactive dashboards, which allows users to uh, refine queries, explore data, and uh, explore the data further in the dashboard and interact with, with your visualization. Um, let's talk about the mechanism, right? So it uses the, as I said before, it, it uses the natural language engine, which process, uh, which is in, which is used to interpret user queries, analyze the, once you, it gets the user queries, it analyzes the semantic meaning of the query. And then it maps it to a relevant data field, uh, which is it's connected to a data set, right? So once that semantic meaning is extracted, what it does next is it employs the machine learning algorithm to select the most appropriate visualization type uh, based on the query that you sent. Uh, 
after that it gives you a, a better supply it, it gives you a better formatting labels and a better uh, charts or graph which matches with your query and based on your uh, on your data sets um, having said that there is another another um, crucial factor that you need to understand while creating a, a dashboard or um, a charts using quicksight queue is its topics right um, that is very much important. So if you ask me topics in a layman's term, it's nothing but it's basically asking, it's basically connecting data sets. You can have multiple data sets, but for clarity and for easier, uh, for easiness, you basically have one data sets attached to one topic. So what is topic? Topic is basically, uh, it's, it's creating an index of a field with synonyms. So basically when you create a topic in QuickSight, you're basically providing a, additional context and structure to your data, which helps QuickSight to better understand and interpret with user queries. So those is, uh, yeah, Sorry, you have- It's kind of like, no, no, I have a few questions. Is there kind of just like some enhanced metadata that you're wrapping around to the data model you're creating QuickSight? Right. And I, I know, Rupak, I know you've done a lot with traditional BI in the past. I, know I have for anyone joining us that is a long time, um, subscribe to this channel, I worked with PM Square and Fast, probably along the lines of BI. And I know for years, most clients I engage with, the, the question is, how can we do more self-service? I think every client we work with, to at some degree, is, is trying to empower their users to be more self-reliant, not rely on IT or the BA team to make every single list or cross tab. Um, and, um, it, it, limited success, I think, what we see. And a lot of it comes down with people. They either don't like to change or they're not willing to sit through a five minute training or try something new. But with this, I think you can really bridge that gap, right? Yes. If you're just, if, you know, instead of calling you, say, hey, I need, I need a cross tab that joins these three tables and this time horizon, you plug it in to a search and bank, you got it, or you got it close. And I know a number of clients, you know, really common to have templates, templatized uh, reports or dashboards It gets, you know, people in different divisions, 70, 80% of the way, you know, even if you're, you know, the queue may not be 100% right, you got them a lot of the way there, you really can shortcut that. So it, um, is that really where, where this can really come in is try to actually bring that holy grail of easy, you know, more, more easy, more, more realized self, uh, self-service, uh, yes. BI. Yes, absolutely. It can be, it, I will not say it will, it will absolutely replace the, the knowledge, but it'll be a great help for a BI developer, right? So the learning curve will be very small, but again, uh, what you have to understand is if you have a very good understanding of the data and you know a business you have you have some years of experience or a few years of experience of bi already and then you also have a good knowledge of data quicksight q can be a very helpful tool with creating a dashboard and making it it so interactive that a business can get value out of it in in a matter of a couple of minutes while creating these dashboards for a BI developer back in uh, back in the days would take you like you know with creating complex complex calculation you have to think about the logic. I mean, if you even if you know about the logic, then you have to understand how to write that in your calculation field. With the help of Q, it helps you create that logic within a matter of like a couple of seconds if you already know what your data looks like and what business logics you're looking for. So that being said, it it it. Uh, bridge the it, it bridge the gaps between you know um understanding and learning the visual uh the bi tool uh with the help of q it also allows you to save some time um and lessen the, the learning learning curve and at the same time save a lot of amount and provide uh, provide a, a huge value to the business as well as save a, a lot of time so that you, you can use that particular time that you were using in the development site instead of uh, into the testing purposes. So making sure that your um, your visualization tool is giving you appropriate values and answers. Yeah, it, 
Uh, yeah, I think a uh, you know, common, uh, we'll get into it more when we talk about Q for developer, right? But this analogy, um, when you talk about things like Q for developer, co-pilots of the worlds out there, right? you know, it, it can take a, a good developer and make them great or make them more efficient. I think that's what you're saying here, you know, for, for a seasoned um, BI developer, you don't, you know, you don't need it to, um, you know, you can use that to augment instead of having to go through and drag and drop all the data items to populate a specific chart. Um, you know, Q can do that heavy lifting for you and then they can use their expertise to really refine it, to right. make it visually appealing, get them all in the right place, um, you know, more like left to right kind of a flow um, and, and really tailor the way it is. But yeah, shortcut a lot of the, the tedious work. Right. Um, so shall we jump into the, the demo? Yeah, let's take a look. Let's see. Bear with me. Just one screen here. So. And I have to present. Are you able to see my screen or? You can see my screen, correct? Uh, I see something happening. Yep. Thank okay. Good. So what we have done here is uh, we have already stored the data, which is cleaned, and we have connected it to QuickSight. So what I'm going to show today is a couple of things here. Uh, how you can create a calculation with your natural language, how you can create visualization, and how you can interact with your dashboard. So for example, let's say I need to build a calculation right here. And I understand the logic, but I am I'm struggling to create that calculated field that I'm going to use for QuickSight Cube, right? So, um, Basically, with the data set that I have, I come here, I say churn rate based on my data, and build calculation. I say give total churn rate by year, and it gives me a calculation. So that's how easy it is, Chris. Uh, once it's done, I come here, I insert, this is my uh, calculated field, churn rate, and then I do save. So it'll come here, right here. That's that's pretty much it to create. That's what I was saying earlier. Is earlier I even though if I know the logic, I need to I need to convert this into a proper proper calculation field. So having Q uh, integrated into QuickSight, it's been so much easier to create all these calculation fields. So, yeah, it, no, that's, I mean, that, I think that it really is telling you how to make season developers more efficient. I mean, I, you know, when I was doing more, more of the BI development, yeah, I was like, generally, no, even maybe know the function, but the function I'd want to use, but it was like, oh, what was the exact syntax of that? And you have to go out to the documentation, Google it, check. Um, but just to be able to really to type quickly, and to get that back and immediately, you know, that jogs my memory. Like, oh yeah, that's right. This is the order. These are the, the elements you need in it. And then you're you're off and running. So yeah, just really can can speed up the this workflow. Right. Absolutely. And it, it has been so much easier because you already, I mean, if you're a seasoned BI developer, like you said, you know um if there is a syntax error, uh, you can always debug it and you can use Q again for that. But uh, if you know the logic. And then, and for simple simple logics, it's easier. But when it comes to a very level of detailed calculations, um, I think this is where Q can be uh, very handy in terms of saving times and giving you a perfect calculations. Um, the next, what I want to show here is, um, again, with the natural language, if I know what I'm trying to do, uh, what, what kind of uh, visualization or charts is on my mind. For example, you're a, uh, you're a, a business director somewhere 
in a company and then you want to understand you already know the vision of what kind of dashboard you're looking for and uh, based on your requirement you can basically use natural language again um, that can create a dashboard so let's uh, and reports so let's see what it it does so basically i come in here build a visual i write question basically heat map and then i add it to analysis and it comes in here so that's how simple it is uh, if i need a line chart that shows the total sales by year i come back again here I build it and I add to analysis. But again, ha great. having and now, oh, sorry. sorry. And so you, you create those. So now those are in and you can edit those and tweak those just like any other yes. widget on the dash dashboard. Yes, absolutely. Once it is in your panel, uh, you can you can come in here where it has X axis and, and Y axis and mm -hmm. also from a features or a customization perspective, you can basically do the, the tweaking and then publish it to your, publish it as a dashboard. Great. All right. And now, so if you're going to jump to this next, let me know. But mm -hmm. you said earlier there is some setup on the dev right. side. So, yeah. So if today you're a quick site customers out there and looking, it's like awesome. I want to configure this. And they, they go into settings and enable it for everyone. They can't really take advantage of this right away, right? There's, there's yes. a little there's a little legwork. Right, so you have to make sure that uh, the queue is activated from the setting side. And then once it's activated, uh, what you have to do is you come here, you connect your data sets, first of all. You get your, your data sets from uh, the wide variety of options, uh, connection options or the connectors that is provided by QuickSight. And then once the data sets is already um, in your spice or your spice, which is in memory, or also in your, um, in your database, how I mean, it depends on how you connect, right? So once you connect your data, data sets, you come here, which is which right here with topics, which I, I was talking about earlier. So you come here, I've already created a topic, which is QuickSight Q demo. And then based on this, uh, you have all your data sets right here. And the topics, as I said earlier, it was synonyms. So this is how it, this is how QuickSight or, or the Q basically understand your natural language and create those uh, charts and 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 uh, calculation fields. So yes, um, certain amount of configuration needs to be done before you jump into creating the visualizations. And, and oh, sorry, if, if, you, if you can go back. So I'm just trying to, mm -hmm. for this will take a little knowledge of how and you of how business users talk about data. Correct. I, I can see, um, like a, maybe it's something that would be a customer field. You definitely see, you know, maybe some sales team members saying, oh, well, that's my account. That's my client. That's my customer. Right. Um, so we're trying to think through ways or just know how users actually speak about the business and being able to bake that into the into the these topics and into the data model so that the, the natural language processing can can find the correct correct uh, certain, fields certain meetings or certain business requirement that should be uh conducted or that should we should have before understanding before creating this dashboard is again like you said we we talk to uh, the the stakeholders the business users and then understand their um, the field data fields data types and based on that we create um, this uh, topic. So for example, let's say um, your data might have a GP, which which uh, the queue will be, it, it, not, it might not understand. So in order to do that, what GP or certain codes, certain, certain um, companies will have SQUs, queues um, pronounced differently or written differently. So you basically come in here, get the requirement, come in here and create those synonyms as GP as gross gross profit or with uh, SKUs like uh, the, um, what kind of SKU it is, right? So based on like uh, whether it is a material or or from um, warehouses. So basically, yes, 
understanding of business data, business perspective, how it has been called, uh, how it has been friendly named, and how the data is being looked at by from the, the leadership team it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So having said that, uh, I have one more thing to do here in Q is once you make all this analysis, you can actually, once you build this visuals, uh, you can publish it. Once you publish this in the dashboard, like I said earlier, you can actually talk to your dashboard and have you get gain more information further down the line. So earlier, what you, we used to do was we used to drill down, um, understand what the data is, and then again, scroll down and see what exactly where we are making sales or, or where we, we're making um, uh, more profit, where the revenue is. So for, I'm just giving you an example, right? So, but now with, with uh, integrating Q, what you can do is, uh, let's say I wanna see What is so if I ask this question um, specifically, it'll give me all the information for the state of California. And you can refine your question, refine your prompt, saying, give me um, for the state, uh, for the year of 2023, 2024. But this is how it is nowadays uh, to basically drill down your reports with the, with the, with the help of uh, natural language queries. Yeah, I mean, that's the way to think. I, yeah, you started going through this, like, wow, this is like drill through on steroids. <laughs> yeah. um, right. And it's drill through, get any, any develop, you know, BI developer, rather, it's very common request. Um, so not having to, but sometimes they can be complicated. You know, you have to make sure, make sure drill paths are correct, make sure widgets and entities uh, throughout are linked correctly. So there's always a path for, for the user to follow. But this is, I mean, this is great. And again, there's really shortcutting uh, the time it takes to deliver, you know, BI asset for people to start using it. And then because it's natural language, they can, they can really jump in and, and start slicing and dicing the data uh, relatively easily um, because you don't have to think about, they don't have to think about the data at all. They just have to think about what they want. Correct. Absolutely. This has made, this has made life so much easier, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you that. But yes, I mean, uh, because I've been working in the BI field for a long time, so I, I, I think this, ha this, is a, this is a fantastic uh integration that amazon has created i i i feel like it has after utilizing q i feel like i have been more productive and uh it has also helped me save ample amount of time which i can actually utilize in debugging other things or or testing other things there's never enough time <laughs> you always get more of it back so it, yeah think, it's always good Right, so this is what I have from uh, a BI perspective. I want to also touch um, a little bit more on the on the the Q for developer side. Um, so shall we jump into the next one? Yeah, let's do that. Right, um, I'll share my screen again. And bear with me, I have so many multiple screens to jump into and talk about but the next one I want to talk about Chris is basically I want to talk about uh, let's see Q for uh, developers right so what is what is Q for developers uh, and what are we what are how we are utilizing um, Q for developers here at PM square so basically it is it is uh, it offers features like code completions, right? Uh, uh, bug, the bug detections and natural language queries um, to help developers to write code more effect effectively and efficiently that uh, I've already told before. Um, where it is being very helpful, it, it helps in our gate. I, it, it helps the code, it helps to explain the code. So for example, let's say a consultant like you and I, uh, we jump into a project where we are very unfamiliar with 
I mean, we are familiar with the code, but the, the legacy system code, it's difficult to understand, right? So what Q can do is it can break down and explain the complex code in a very uh, plain languages. So making, making it easier for consulting like us to understand and troubleshoot. Uh, the other aspect is basically it's, it's help us to debug our code, which means uh, it assists in identifying errors and suggesting fixes uh, stream, which further down the line streamlines, streamlines the debugging process. And the third part is it helps us to optimize the code. So it offers uh, suggestions to code, code uh, to suggestions to improve code efficiency, and helping developers to optimize their work quickly and effectively. So that is what uh, Q for Developers actually offers, and there are more it offers from uh, our perspective. What we have been doing here is. We have been integrating Q into one of our IDEs and uh, basically utilizing Q to get our code optimized and get our and debug our codes. Well, yeah, let's, I mean, I, yeah, for from our perspective, I know, yeah, you know, jumping in, especially if it's a new client, new code base, it takes time to to read it. Yeah, any kind of way to expedite that. I mean, that's where we've seen, you know. Um, great improvement there on on, on the skill path um i mean you know correcting code it's important i mean all of the code i write is perfect the first time so not really useful for me <laughs> um you know i mean that is extremely important these are all you know, it goes back to to making you know people faster this isn't going to to write an application for you um but it's definitely going to take um you know good developers great developers can just make them more efficient uh to be able to to produce more more commits uh, and, and take junior developers, um, I think you know make them less error prone. You know help them to uh, stay to best practices Correct. more more consistently, um, and, and to be able to to have more consistent output, which which is I think is is good. You know there's less oversight there. The the senior devs then can can focus on on doing more delivery out than just you know doing oversight and code review, um, which which is a a big a big time suck. Uh, I mean, it needs to be done, but you know, this can this can help. Uh, uh, you know, go you know, uh, wallpaper with some of those those issues and and really um, um, really just make the team more efficient. Right, right. That is absolutely correct. So uh, I would like to do a little bit of demo. So I I know um, so folks who are familiar with Python script, this is a very very simple python script where i'm trying what i'm trying to do here is compare uh convert a csv file into parquet so that i can use that into my etl files later but uh this code has an error because uh, my file only has 100 rows but it is trying to read uh or get the value from 1001 rows so i just made this um, so that we can do the testing here so basically what I'm going to do here is uh, ask questions to Q about uh, explaining this code for me. Uh, the next step would be um, finding out the errors and giving me the, the right code. And then I can use that to convert this into a, a parquet file. Uh, before jumping in into how I can do this, I'll show you how easier it is to integrate Q in, in IDs. So basically you come here into, and I'm using Visual Studios, they are the extension basically you can use the extension you come in here ask for amazon q source for amazon q actually and then you do all the configurations with your amazon account and then um, this icon should appear on your left hand side if you're using a visual studio and that's pretty much it that's how easy it is to integrate um, q in your ids so let's let's jump in and see um what this code is about. So like, like I said, it's basically what I'm trying to do. It's basically it's reading a Python CSP file and then converting into parquet file. So imagine if you're going into a, into, into a, legacy system code you don't understand properly you even though if you have understanding of a programming language this would be so much helpful for you to troubleshoot if there is any error or to basically understand what 
what the, what your code is actually doing. So that's how simple it is, right? Um, yeah, and I mean, this is a simple example, but you can see if you've, you know, this 16 lines of code, but if you had a few hundred lines with different arrays and ZTL, different frames and all these different components working together, passing variables back and forth, it would take some time to, to go through and, and read all that. But yeah, to be able to get a, a quick hit summary is super valuable. Right, absolutely. So now, I mean, now you understand what this uh, code is doing. Let's try running this real quick. So as I said earlier, I have the index out of bound error because it's trying to read the file, which has which has only uh, hundred rows, right? So now I know this. I can say uh, debug this. The error. And I'm not going to read the whole detail, but it'll tell you, like I said, index out of bound. And because the file is only uh, 100 rows and we're trying to read the 1,001 rows, um, once it's done, it'll give you the corrected code, which you can actually bring here. And if you run it again, my conversion is complete and I get that archi file. So Very cool. this is good, but again, I, I highly and strongly suggest, and I know we Q, utilize Q as, as a helping hand. If you have already, if you know the understanding of our language, then it, it will be so much helpful. It will be so much easier for yours uh, instead of completely relying on Q, but um, understanding, understanding of a programming language, this helps you also learn in the process of debugging and um, uh, optimizing. Also, also it helps saves you lots of time, but also at the same time, as I said earlier, it helps you debug and learn at the same time. Was it like, when you say learn, is it just that it, because it's it's helping give the right answer, it's helping give uh, proper structure, proper syntax, it was a combination? Right. Right, both of it, right? So it, it structures syntax. I mean, you can ask for, sometimes you can ask for syntax using your natural language. Like in the process of debugging, you can also look into it. It will give you best practices uh, on what uh, syntaxes should be used and how to optimize it. So that, that way you can uh, learn and not repeat that mistake again. Because I, I when I started, using PySpark in the earlier days, uh, it was always about, you know, uh, writing codes and learning from my errors, right? So uh, you will never, you'll never able be, and that's my experience, someone might be different, but you will never ever be <laughs> able to write the, the code perfectly in the first time. So, you know, it's always about trial and errors. Uh, but in the earlier days, that's what I used to do with the errors I used to learn debugging it so with the help of Q that will that will expedite how easier it is to learn your error learn the errors that you have and you know and the learning curve as I said earlier uh, will be very less yeah absolutely I, I think that's actually one of the, the interesting use cases you know as more gen AI systems are deployed uh, one like this it, it's having um, try not to personify it, but yeah having an entity to bounce ideas off of to, to get you know more real time feedback uh, to collaborate with to just get different ideas to get your own uh, creative juices flowing and and that you know in the developer tool I, I, yeah to your point you know being able to to go through and you know get something really quick but then if especially if it's something new in a new language you're unfamiliar with um, to, to be able to get into the feedback of you know, structure it this way, maybe add something different um, is, is super powerful. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so this is what I have from a developer side. Uh, I have one more demo. I know we have lots of time already gone, but I would definitely like to talk about the next, uh, the next offering that Amazon provides in Q, which is Q for business. Uh, so shall we jump into that side. Let's do it. All right. Uh, again, I have to share my screen. I know I have lots of screens open, so bear with me. No, you're good. It's all, lots of good stuff. 
Yes, I mean, I'm very much impressed and uh, with how Q has evolved over a couple of years now. Um, this is fantastic in, if from a consulting perspective and also from someone who is very uh, enthusiastic about what Amazon offers every year. Um, yeah, absolutely. It, you know, just from, from just being a component of QuickSight to, to being able to touch all aspects of a, of a business, it's, uh, it's very impressive how, how it's grown. All right. So, um, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, what Q for business is. Um, so basically think about it as a smart digital assistant designed for your workplace. So it's it's basically like I, I've been talking about this from a long time, but uh, from from earlier as well. Uh, it's like having a knowledge based coworker who is available twenty four seven, and who knows about your company's data inside out. Um, this particular AI tool can answer your questions about company's policy. If you have your doc, if you have your documents stored in a knowledge base about company policies, and also help with. Uh, tasks like writing data, uh, writing, writing and data analysis, and also provides insights based on your company's information. Um, so why, if you ask me why uh, Q for business, it is, I think, designed to make your work a little bit easier so we can focus more towards the, the creative side. Um, like I said, I uh, it is, it is, it might be likely based somewhat similar to on the background, um, the Amazon Titans model, because we don't know what large language model has been utilized in the background to generate all these responses, right? Um, but before we dive into more into technical side, what I want to uh, explain a little bit or how it will be easier for folks to understand what Q for business is, there are a few keywords, keywords that people or everybody needs to understand is one is RAG, what is RAG? Uh, the other one is how the workflow works for um, Q uh, for business and um, how it is being integrated with the help of Retriever. So let's talk about RAG. What is RAG? Everybody's talking about RAG nowadays. So I'll, I'll try to explain a little bit in a very layman's term. So RAG, it's, it is a Retriever augmented Generation, which is a method using artificial intelligence uh, so basically what it is, it's, it's, it's a combination of two steps. And um, basically it's, it, it, when I say combination of two steps, it is about retrieving information and generating responses, right? So let's, let's say you have a data in your database or in your knowledge base, which can be an object storage, CRM, anything. Uh, with the help of RAG, what you do is you retrieve the, the information first, along with the question that you ask. For example, like I said earlier, what is your holiday policy? If you ask in your knowledge base using um, the front end, along with the question, the context, uh, it generates the appropriate information. And then along with the context, it is sent to a large language model to generate response. Uh, once the response is generated, it is sent back to user with uh, appropriate response so that's that's the rag in a very small uh, nutshell but that is basically getting a relevant information two steps and then generating responses yeah just being able to augment the, the response generation with your own information Correct. your own knowledge absolutely yep. right so that is that is what rag is uh from a queue for a business perspective how it works is for example let's say you store the data in an object storage and you can store and there are mq for business offers 40 plus uh storage capabilities right so i'm just giving an example let's say you have a data for an object storage uh that is where you have a large amount of pdf files um, so unstructured data uh, text files and flat files for example so from the front end perspective when your user sends a question which is a user request it is sent to Amazon Q. Once Q is received that uh, request, it queries the knowledge base for relevant information. Um, once the relevant information is retrieved, it returns the data to Amazon Q. Uh, then Q used your context and the return data uh, or the relevant data to large language model. And from the large language model, it is processed 
and sent to AI generated responses, which is sent back again to Q and the final response is sent back to users. So that is pretty much what RAG model looks like, but Amazon Q is utilizing it, the same concept, the RAG model. All right, so we're gonna take a look at take a look at it in action. Right, absolutely. So uh, this is a POC that I've been building with our team. Uh, basically, we have a we have a client who who has a, a small company where they go out and um, install a garbage disclosure in the community uh, because there is different models has different uh, different uh, instruction manual. It's sometimes difficult to read the instruction manual. I know uh, I've also tried doing that. Uh, so it's difficult to get the appropriate steps in a, in a, or understand read or instructions in a very matter of seconds. So what we have created here is we have stored all their instruction manuals into a S3 object storage, um, integrated Amazon Q for businesses, and then basically ask question on the front end and it'll give you um, the instructions on how to install the garbage disposer basically in a in a matter of seconds depending on what model you have so let's do this again and i'm intentionally doing a spell mistake because i want to show that it also is it also understands the, spe uh, the spellings properly. So once I ask the question, this is how easier to get the information from the large amount of data that I've stored in the backend in the S3 object storage. And it'll give you the, all the instructions right here. Uh, well, I mean, that's very, it's very, it's, I mean, it's great, very quickly bringing it. But so what were the, so the numbers and sources? Is that what what are what are those are, are those like footnotes that are going to take you to the actual documentation yes so it'll show you exactly where it is <clears throat> uh, the sources will take you to the documentation this is it'll give you the where exactly in which figure it is so it is even more helpful so you can just go into the, the documentation the pdf file itself and then uh, from there you can look into the figures um, and you can also see the the sources right here where uh, it'll take you the documentation as well and so this doesn't have to be training manuals this could be onboarding documents really anything that would be sitting in a sharepoint right potentially Absolutely. yes as i I'm, i've been i've been giving an example of object storage but yes you mm -hmm. can of crm right uh you can use sharepoint especially also uh to integrate with sharepoint or or your google storage drive uh, where basically uh Databases, CRM, OXIP stories everywhere, right? Where you can store data. Okay. One couple of things that I want to add here, right? So uh, once this is, for example, once we have found the instructions and let's say we, we found something unusual into the instruction manual. So what we went forward is we have also created a plugin with the Jira here and uh, I found it like, let's say I need to create a ticket for this. So basically I can say, uh, create a ticket for this. And with the integration with the Jira plugin integration, I can actually create a ticket in a span of minutes right here and then submit and it'll come to my kanban board where i can actually see uh let's do this again it's live it in smoke and mirrors right. <laughs> let's do this again But that's actually really good. Like you can see um, there are you know, there are guardrails on, right. on what can be included. Yeah, the, the user can't just or the model, you know, the user can't just input anything to modifier away your crazy request in your Jira system. You can right. use some guardrails to make sure fields are, are defined and 
descriptions, et cetera, every, everything is, is properly accounted for. So it's not just uh, wild, wild west with, with right. models doing anything. Right. Um, apologies, but I, I know I've already created a ticket on this earlier. So uh, basically with the Jira plugins, it has been very much easier to create the ticket on this. Uh, like you see here also, I, the few other things that I want to highlight was apps. What is apps? So if it's, it's uh, uh, if you're repetitive task, like for, let's say you can, um, like for the onboarding processes where it's the same task that is done again and again, you can create an apps on uh, queue and then basically use that app to have that onboarding process. So you don't have to come here again and ask uh, questions again and again saying what is the onboarding processes you can leverage the queue app to to use the onboarding processes um, I haven't created anything on apps but um, basically you come in here you ask the questions and then you generate an app uh, what is library it is the collection of apps which is basically uh, it's divided into different fields IT HR sales based on your requirement that is how your apps is being created so, so when you say that, so you're talking to more of a, a, a predefined workflow. So instead right. of the the free flowing nature of the chat experience, this this will still be part of a queue, but it's going to be more in Rails. It's going to you know something you know, being taking you through you you know onboarding. You know, right. if you're asking, um, you know, choose between these two dental plans, these three PPOs. You know, go go through all those in a, in a very structured way. Still, Q taking the lead on that, um, and you know, delivering it to backend system, HR system. But it's so it's just more more of a tailored workflow that Q would be following. So the free flowing yeah. conversation. Absolutely, that was the word I was looking for, Chris Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, the Jira integration is cool, right? So, well, what's the level of effort on that? So, as some of the historically. Oh, been tasked with with building and, and integrating things like is that going to be a day for me five five weeks six weeks so generation <clears throat> actually it is very straightforward task right so you uh you go on plugins once you're familiar with the queue environment uh you go on plugins it has predefined integrations that has already been defined in in queue environment uh queue for business business environment you go in there um you provide your secret key with the plugins. Let's say I'm using Zira. I provide my secrets, my administrative accounts, my maybe uh, like 15 to 20 minutes is what I'm thinking. Like if you think about it back in the days when you have to do the integrations again, right? I mean, yeah. uh, you have to understand what the use cases is, what the data, uh, data use looks like, whether you have a technical expertise to create these plugins or not. So those were the big, biggest factors. But now, I mean, uh, with the help of QES, the plugins, 15, maybe 15, 20 minutes, you have, once you talk with your, the, here I'm giving an example of Jira because once you have a, a conversation with your Jira admin, when you get the proper configurations and tokens from them, it's straightforward. Right, okay, so API driven, similar to anything. You have secret keys. Right. Uh, API endpoint to hit, and as long as your credentials that you're you're off and running, yes, absolutely, it's great. Um, and I think there are some pre-built ones, right? Like I think for the common ones, you have Jira's, your your Salesforce's, SharePoint's, yes, um, ServiceNow, uh, Salesforce. I'm trying to remember. Uh, but, but there's yeah, there there's there's some, and then you can customize. Obviously, yes, yes. there there's a there's empty shell that that can go out and you can you can tailor to to whatever you need well great um yeah i know we are coming up in the hour um all right any any other parting thoughts on no. on q that's what i have from the demo side i think q has been very helpful especially here at pm square where we have been leveraging q uh and helping our customers achieve uh one step forward towards generative ai side so it it, it has been very helpful i I'm looking forward to what other offerings Q is going to bring uh, in the near future. Yeah, well, Rupak, thanks for putting on this together. This was super helpful, and I, I you know, learned a, learned a few things walking through this. So, you know, thank you for for walking us through this, uh, and for everyone else, thank you for joining. Um, definitely reach out if you're interested in learning more about Q.
uh, happy to connect you with with Rupak or anyone else on the team to to talk you through the capabilities and how your organization can specifically uh, leverage you know one of the different aspects of Q, whether it's QuickSight uh, developer or or for business, uh, and we can also um, help you know get you jump started and, and set up some of these integrations and uh, get your team off and running so you can start taking full advantage of, of those capabilities uh, as soon as possible. So. Thank you all for joining us today. We'll we'll see you on the next one. Thank you, hey everyone.